Alrighty, so this is Diesel We The People News, okay? If I say anything, I'm not giving legal advice. Why? Because I'm an attorney, that's why. Alrighty? I'm just a man. No more, no less. I just don't happen to look straightforward. I always look around me to be able to protect myself by any means necessary. So, as you can tell, I kind of paused it right here to have you read this, okay? And uh, see if that's what we are. All right? So read it very carefully. And uh, I'm going to stand arm length from this video. Uh, this was about a year ago when I seen this. I came across it again on an accident. <laughs> I was like, well, son of God, I forgot about doing this. Uh, I was busy at the time. Uh, but let's uh, proceed forward. All right, uh, just to give you insight of a little history. Back in the old days, there was castles. And around that castle, there was walls. And when you lived outside the walls of that castle, people had to walk up and to the guard. Okay? And the guard would ask, what is your purpose being here? Because you're going to be in the king's jurisdiction. Even though the king had jurisdiction outside the wall, he had full jurisdiction inside the wall, okay? And so you had to answer whether you're going to see the king or you're going to be judged or see the priest or act in commerce, barter, uh, see relatives. So you had to divulge the reason why you was going to go in the jurisdiction of the walls of the castle, okay? Now... We've been watching the uh, videos, right? The courts nowadays has got them little security guards, right? Asking stupid little questions, identifying yourself, and all this kind of stuff. And it makes me led to believe that somehow or another that the judges made themselves kings and the courthouse is actually have become their castle and when you enter in there you are now subjects all right you heard cops say well, i've got a subject here well subject means beneath the king all right you're a subject to the king just saying think about these things right um officers you know they became a king because they called you a subject just saying uh, you dirty little slaves. <laughs> I don't know, people. This this is not my crap. You know, I didn't create this system we live in nowadays. All right, let's proceed forward. All right, this is going to be a two-part video. And I stretch this out a little too long. Everybody, on this uh, kind of rainy Thursday, so we have something to talk about as we always do. This is uh, very personal and dear to me. What I'm about to show and share. This is what scared the ever-living lights out of me when I saw this happen in America. And I hope, just maybe, this scares a few other people. So this was at the very beginning of 2020, and I mean before people were even talking about COVID, it was in January of 2020. And um, this gentleman, the sex I'm going to pause here uh, just for a second. You guys pause it a little bit longer if you want to read that. Now, you may want to go to his web channel to get a clear vision. Uh, I don't know how this is going to come out on my video. So, uh, if you guys want to check it out and read it, because it's going to be hard to hear, y'all. Uh, so there is a 
transcript here, okay? And uh, this is just conspiracy, okay? Save the slaves. Save yourself from slavery, all right? If you want to look up this video and get more in-depth of it, okay? Oop. There we go. Green veteran. True believer in rights and freedom and God keeps on getting dragged into court. Can't think of any lawful reason. And if you said because there's a lawful court order, all you gotta do is swear to that under oath or affirmation on the record. You know, kind of like when the clerk puts in their transcripts of the proceedings, they got to swear under oath or affirmation that it's a true and correct transcript to the best of their knowledge and ability. You just do that with what you say is a true and lawful court order, and I'll carry it out for you. So what are we doing here? No. Pretty good question. boys and girls the fact of whether you are a slave or not or whether you are subject to the will of others against your will by force otherwise known as slavery isn't even a legal question in nature it's not legally relevant oh really because of my understanding that they added an entire amendment to the Constitution over it, and we fought the bloodiest war Americans have ever seen. But that has no relevance here, where we're forcing you to do things against your will. And I would actually challenge that too, as well. Challenge the jurisdiction. Well, okay. So you just say you have jurisdiction, so I'm under assumptions and presumptions. I'm a slave. So do you agree to that assumption that there's, we're under the jurisdiction of slavery? Well, there's plenty of factual evidence that is true and correct. I don't know more about the affidavit for which that inquiry is relevant to me. Did you hear him? He said, in order to proceed, I gotta know whether I'm a slave or not, because that's the only way I can understand what is going on in this thing you call a courtroom. Okay, we're going to pause there again, just for a couple of seconds, so you can kind of give a little time to pause and read. That way we can get the true definition of facts on slavery, y'all. Speaking of which, we talked about persons. As if I'm a slave. If I'm a slave, then obviously you can do everything that you're doing. And she won't answer them. And before this happened, we thought that she would break the law. So we write to the governor, to the lieutenant governor, to the attorney general's office, to the chief judiciary of Illinois, to the chief judiciary of that state. We write to the agency that trains judicial officials on how to act in law saying hey maybe 
this woman might commit a crime. We can't charge her with pre-crime, but I'm pretty sure she's going to do it in this courtroom on this day. If you would like to show up and uphold the law. We thought that might be a deterrent for them breaking the law. But all we figured out is that it's not relevant for whether you're a slave or not. That, that's not relevant. understand why you believe you can dictate every single facet of my life. You say I'm not paying child support. No, I'm not doing what you will not even swear is a true and lawful order upon the record of the court, so I have no duty or obligation. Again, y'all, <clears throat> pausing it for a second so you guys can have a chance to pause it. Read that. Consent. Right? The courts must have you consent. Consent from the governed. We the people. Y'all. Oh, by the way, and this is a family court issue. That is a contract. So you're telling me that judge can force people into contract. Well, this Constitution says you cannot be forced into contract. I'm not bound to do it. And I just don't agree. And I have told you time and time and time again over the past year, I don't know how many times he had told her, he wishes to support his children. He wishes to take care of them. He wishes to be there for them and not be an absent father. Because we realize not having a dad around or not having a mom around could cause issues in the future for children. They should have both around. Yes, I wish to support my children, so why don't you just get out of my way and stop preventing me from doing it because you're trying to convince everybody in society that the state is God. Okay, I've indicated to you that those are not appropriate inquiries of the court. You continue to apply your bond on them, and you're getting close to the line. So I have explained to you, Perhaps you might want to take a break and inquire with the support system as to how you would like to proceed on this court proceeding here today. If not, I need to know whether you would ready to proceed as it relates to providing a basis, a legal basis, for why you have failed to take out the court as directed.
All right, we're a little bit out of time, but we're going to jump on part two, but I want to just let you know. All right, the judge and officer right there conspired. And I believe it's 18-242. Just saying. Because that sheriff right there, the deputy that's uh, in the courtroom right there, right, he's to keep the peace for both sides. He's supposed to be bipartisan, y'all. If that judge is acting in dishonor, he's to arrest that judge right then and there. The sheriffs has misplaced themselves. They don't even know what they're doing anymore. And uh, he actually gave a lawful uh, question that that judge did not answer. And that bailiff right there, the sheriff bailiff, said, uh, Judge, you need to an answer or I'm going to hold you and uh, put you in jail. But we lost our sheriffs as well uh, due to the contracts of the counties. Study your sheriff's job in your states and counties, y'all. What they're actually constitutionally supposed to be doing. They're not supposed to follow the law. They're supposed to follow the Constitution. Just saying. It's supposed to be common law, not contract law. And they're supposed to be keeping the peace. All right. This week, People News, part two coming up.